When it comes to the Oscars, Hugh Jackman just can't catch a break. Here's a terrific actor who's given a variety of excellent dramatic performances in films made by talented, Oscar-nominated, and winning directors, and yet his work is almost never recognized by the Academy. He gives a solid turn in The Front Runner, but the movie wasn't liked very much. He's amazing in Logan, but it's hard to break into the Oscars with a comic book movie lead performance. He's dazzling in The Greatest Showman, but Academy members only nominated the film in the Best Original Song category, and Prisoners, holy shit, Prisoners. Maybe his best work on film ever, ignored. His only Academy Award nomination to date is for Les Miserables from 2012, the year nobody had a snowball's chance in hell of beating Daniel Day-Lewis for Lincoln. I say it again, the man can't catch a break. He's clearly worthy of having more than one Oscar nod, and possibly a win too, but he's had a problem with genre bias and bad timing, as well as highly anticipated movies that floundered upon their release. His performances have earned him four Golden Globe Award nominations and one win in the comedy or musical category for Les Mis. He's also received five Primetime Emmy Award nominations, most recently for his magnificent performance in 2020's Bad Education, a film that definitely would have earned him some Oscar buzz if it had premiered in theaters instead of on HBO. Every year I wait and see, will there finally be that incredible film for Jackman to get him back to the Academy Awards? Going into 2022, it looked like his best shot since Les Mis was on the horizon, a drama from the Oscar-winning writer-director of 2020's The Father and producers of Lion and The Power of the Dog, a film with an impressive ensemble cast including Laura Dern, Vanessa Kirby, and Anthony Hopkins, with its premiere at the major fall festivals followed by a limited theatrical release in November, 2022's The Sun looked to be a sure thing, especially when it came to Hugh Jackman's Oscar chances. With Hopkins' Best Actor Oscar win for The Father two years prior, I figured The Sun, its title almost sounding like a spiritual sequel, had a very strong chance of getting multiple Academy Award nominations, the likeliest of which was Best Actor for Hugh Jackman. I didn't even think the movie had to be amazing. As long as it was good, and Jackman was bringing it in the lead role, he was probably going to find himself with Oscar nomination number two. But then, yeah... Here we are in August of 2023, the next round of fall festivals is almost upon us, and Florian Zeller's The Sun has been all but forgotten. Critically reviled and a bomb at the box office, the movie now sits quietly on Netflix, already having died a very quick death. In August of 2022, The Sun was on many Oscar contender lists. It was highly anticipated going into Venice and Toronto. It was part of the Oscars Academy Conversation series and seen at the Academy series. Hugh Jackman and Laura Dern were on all the red carpets and talking up the film in multiple interviews, and Jackman received a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor in a Motion Picture Drama. But then the movie received not a single Academy Award nomination. What the hell happened with The Sun? Hi, I'm Brian Rowe. This is The Awards Contender, and in today's video, we're talking everything that went wrong with The Sun and why it proved to be a huge Oscar fiasco. To start, Let's go back to the project's origins. The Sun began as a 2018 stage play written by Florian Zeller. It premiered in Paris and then was translated to English for a run in London in 2019. Critics loved it, and the play won a Moliere Award. Zeller had written a few produced screenplays, but his first film as writer-director was 2020's The Father, based on his 2012 stage play. The film was obviously a big hit with critics and audiences, and therefore Zeller was able to quickly follow it up with The Sun, the story of a successful New York lawyer, divorced and remarried with a new baby, whose life is turned upside down when his son with his ex-wife reveals he's struggling with his mental health and wants to move in with him. Sometimes I just, I just feel that I'm going crazy, Dad. What are you talking about? I'm telling you, I don't know what's happening to me. Right after the 93rd Academy Award nominations were announced in early 2021, Zeller revealed to Deadline Hollywood that he was finishing up his screenplay adaptation of The Sun, and Hugh Jackman and Laura Dern were announced to star in the film the following April. Production lasted from August to October 2021, and the film's world premiere was announced to be at the 79th Venice Film Festival in September 2022, where The Sun was nominated for The Golden Lion. Now the only thing left to do was to share the movie with the world, and let's be honest, things were looking pretty good. So what are the main reasons why The Sun looked to have Oscar written all over it? Here are five of them. 
The first reason was absolutely its writer-director Florian Zeller, who would have been an attractive asset to anyone in early 2021 after his debut feature The Father became a surprise hit at the box office, making $28 million on a $6 million budget, was adored by critics, received six Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture, and won two Oscars, Best Adapted Screenplay for Zeller and Christopher Hampton, and Best Actor for Anthony Hopkins. I mean, that film is damn good. One of the 10 best films of 2020 easily, an emotional punch to the gut, featuring what's possibly Hopkins' finest work on film ever. <laughs> I want my mommy. I want my mommy. I'm gonna get out of here. So yeah, our eyes were on anything Zeller chose to do next, and for him to follow up The Father with a drama film called The Son, also based on one of his beloved plays, seemed to be an excellent and obvious choice. How could his second feature possibly go wrong when so much of The Father went so right? He was close to the material, he had access to pretty much any actors he wanted, Zeller appeared primed to go two for two, Oscar nominations seeming imminent for The Sun even before cameras started rolling. The second reason was Hugh Jackman playing the lead role of Peter, as he was an actor who had been searching for years for that second Academy Award nod. He put in some good work in movies in the 2000s, but 2012's Les Miserables showcased the peak of Jackman's talent as a dramatic actor, as a singer, as a force to be reckoned with. That Golden Globe win and Oscar nomination are great ones, and then he continued to impress in the ensuing years in films like Prisoners, Logan, The Greatest Showman. When Jackman was announced to be the star of The Sun, I thought like many others probably did, okay, here it is. The right project at the right time with the right director, Jackman will finally be back at the Academy Awards one decade after Les Mis. As long as the movie was strong, he had a very good chance of getting into Best Actor. The third reason was both Laura Dern and Vanessa Kirby portraying the roles of Kate and Beth, respectively. Academy members have been friendly to them in recent years. Dern won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress on her third nomination for Marriage Story in 2020, and one year later, at the same ceremony, the father was up for lots of awards. Vanessa Kirby was recognized with her first Oscar nomination for her emotionally devastating performance in Pieces of a Woman. Having both Dern and Kirby in the sun looked like Florian Zeller wasn't messing around. He was compiling an astonishing cast of Oscar-nominated and Oscar-winning actors. I mean, hell, two-time winner Anthony Hopkins has a scene in the film, too. Ignoring the sun was never going to be in the cards as we came closer to the 2022 Venice and Toronto film festivals. The fourth reason was its dark and emotional subject matter. If the sun had a lighter tone than the father, then maybe Oscar buzz wouldn't have seemed so obvious, but the film dealing with topics like mental health, teenage depression, self-harm, parental neglect, made it a very serious drama that was going to have a dark tone similar to The Father. It was clearly going to have lots and lots of scenes of great actors yelling and crying. Florian Zeller in every way was making a movie meant to be a strong contender during award season. And the fifth and final reason was it premiering at Venice and Toronto. Like I talked about in my Oscar fiasco video about Empire of Light, your movie having a glitzy, glamorous red carpet premiere at a couple of the big fall festivals often signifies good things. Usually when an Oscar contender stinks, the studio will quietly dump it into theaters in mid-September or have it pushed to the following spring, but the son was brought into the world as if it was going to be as well received as Zeller's The Father. The idea was to get that strong word of mouth out there in the months leading up to the film's theatrical release and have a successful awards push going into 2023. However, successful it wasn't. Like Amsterdam, Babylon, and Empire of Light behind it, The Sun was yet another Oscar fiasco, a movie that really should have gotten into Best Actor for Hugh Jackman and Best Adapted Screenplay for Florian Zeller, but came up on Oscar nominations morning with nothing. Nada. Zip. What hurt the film the most, I'd say, is that ultimately, it's just not very good. In preparation for this video, I finally watched the movie on Netflix, and I went in with an open mind, I promise. And you know what? It's not terrible. It's not anywhere close to Amsterdam level bad in my eyes. I would give it like a 5 out of 10. It's perfectly watchable. It has a couple of strong scenes, the best one featuring Anthony Hopkins. Jackman is pretty good in the movie too. He has a surprising amount of restraint when he could have really gone for the histrionics. He's not the problem. For me, the movie is brought down big time by two key issues. 
The first is that the overall narrative I found to be extremely manipulative. Nothing really progresses in the story in a natural way. Scene after scene, I didn't find the characters to be acting realistically, making decisions that seemed logical. Especially in the frustrating third act, Florian Zeller pushes the viewer to the brink of anger, honestly. I won't give away what happens in the last 10 minutes of the movie, but most of it is melodramatic and feels unearned, and as the credits roll, you're left shaking your head. The other big problem, and I don't want to sound mean about this, but it has to be said, Zen McGrath as the son Nicholas gives a very awkward and stilted performance. He tries, in many scenes he's emoting, screaming, but I found almost no moment or line delivery of McGrath to ring true. There's a deadness behind the way he says most of his dialogue that felt weird, like I was watching a rehearsal and not the finished film. McGrath has the right look for the character, and again, he tries his best, but up against acting titans like Hugh Jackman, Laura Dern, and Vanessa Kirby, and with his already strained and manipulative screenplay, he just doesn't cut it, and I do believe a more experienced actor would have been the better call, someone like Levi Miller or Noah Jupe. I mean, I could see McGrath being much better in another movie with a stronger script. Zeller's dialogue is oftentimes very forced, and a scene of Nicholas dancing with Peter and Beth is so unbelievably strained and misguided, with a hilarious final quote-unquote emotional beat, it has to be seen to be believed. So what brought down the sun right out of the gate? The reviews, of course. Oh boy, the reviews. The movie got a few positive notices out of Venice and Toronto, like from Peter de Bruges and Variety, and Peter Bradshaw and Guardian. Maybe they really liked the name of the film's main character, but it mostly got negative notices overall. David Rooney and Hollywood Reporter saying the film is a punishing slog, Steph Green at BBC.com calling it flawed, and significantly less impressive than The Father. After the red carpets were said and done, after all the interviews and press engagements with the director and actors were over, everything came down to how the movie was received, and the early word was so negative, even more negative I would argue than Empire of Light, that by mid-September last year, the awards train for The Sun looked to already be over. Still, the movie wasn't buried by any means. It played at AFI Fest in Los Angeles in early November, then began its limited release on November 25th. After playing in only a few theaters for close to two months, The Sun finally opened nationwide on January 20th, 2023 in 554 theaters, earning just a touch over $200,000 opening weekend, ending its run with a paltry 450000 Worldwide, the movie only made $3.6 million, a bit less than the father's $28 million worldwide two years earlier, and that was at the height of COVID. By the end of 2022, the only hope the son had was in the Best Actor category for Hugh Jackman, because surprisingly, I would say, given all the scathing reviews for the son, Jackman made it into the final five for Best Actor in a Motion Picture Drama at the Golden Globe Awards, up against Jeremy Pope for The Inspection, Bill Nye for Living, Brennan Fraser for The Whale, and Austin Butler, who won the trophy on January 10th, 2023, for his performance in Elvis. I'm sitting here holding the thing. It says, best performance by an actor in a motion picture drama, Hugh Jackman, The Sun. What did you think, Hugh, when you got this news? Well, I know, because I handed that to you. <laughs> yes. um, I, I was greatly honored. It's, yes. a, it's a huge thrill, and it's a role I'm really proud of in a film that I, I worked with incredible people and a story that I really think needs to be told. So this is all wonderful icing on the well, cake. Now, you might think Hugh Jackman had, like, a slim chance of getting in at the Oscars after that Golden Globes nod, but no. The same way Olivia Colman's award season began and ended with her Globes nod for Empire of Light, Jackman's chances of getting in anywhere else, Critics' Choice, SAG, the Oscars, were a million to one. Jackman didn't even bother showing up to the Golden Globes earlier this year, and it's easy to see why. He knew there was no point. It was the film's only Globes nod, all awards possibility for The Sun had come crashing down long before that surprise nomination appeared, and so then came the Oscar nominations, BAFTA, SAG, the 95th Academy Awards, Florian Zeller, Hugh Jackman, and The Sun were nowhere to be found. A film many of us expected a year ago to be a major Oscar player came up with nothing, and now is just simply there for people to stumble upon on Netflix. I wonder if unsuspecting viewers at home who see that thumbnail on their Netflix screen of Jackman or Hopkins will ever know just how anticipated this movie was at a select moment in time, how it was being talked about by so many Oscar pundits, including yours truly, in the summer of 2022. Maybe they'll like the movie. Maybe they'll hate it. Maybe they'll think of it as I did, 
As a middle-of-the-road misfire, that's not an awful way to spend two hours, but doesn't leave you with much at the end, and should have been so much better. The Sun may already be forgotten by most, but here at the Awards Contender, we remember them all. The legendary Academy Award winners, the Blockbuster Awards favorites, and yes, the gigantic Oscar fiascos. Thanks so much for watching! If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below, what are some other films made in recent years you would love to see an Oscar fiasco video about? I look forward to reading your comments, and we'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.